I'm popping in with a quick video on the metal stud framing on my Quonset. On my YouTube channel, I got a question from someone to go into more specifics with that. So I'm gonna do the best I can to kind of explain exactly how they did that on the gable end walls. Now, I've actually never done any metal framing myself. I have researched it a ton because I'm going to be attempting to finish out and frame these three shipping containers in the background um, into office suites. So I know that I want to use metal framing on those, so I've been researching it a lot, but for these gable end walls in my closet, I actually used a really amazing framing subcontractor. So I will just kind of pop in with the best explanation of all the components I can, just from my observation and having been here a little bit while they were framing. I distinctly remember I was on site, but I wasn't doing the framing myself. And I just remember the smell of burning metal as they had to cut through all of those studs. I know it was probably a pain, but it was really the right choice to make. I'm so happy with the end result. So let's take a closer look. I tried to pop in here yesterday to film this and I just got tied up and then Today got away from me and now it's overcast and the sun is setting so I'm gonna bring a flashlight in here and we can take a look at this. Again, metal framing is completely foreign to me. This is not my knowledge base but let me just show you what's going on and hopefully we can give some clarification. So as I've mentioned in my previous videos, my building is 34 by 40, that's 34 feet wide this way and then 40 foot long on the arches. Now I got mine from Steelmaster. You can actually buy them with the metal end walls and I think for the next one or so I will. I do like the look of it, but for this particular building, I got a much better discount for not having the end walls in there, obviously. It was kind of like a, a really good closeout pricing type of deal and i also wanted to do some customizations to the end walls because this particular building is going to not only be a warehouse for me but it's going to be a retail storefront in half of it to start so i wanted it to kind of look cool and i just thought i would dive in and see what i could do now we went back and forth back and forth back and forth deciding on should we use wood framing? Should we use metal framing? And when we were in the planning phases, that was kind of before the crazy increase of lumber. So while that did play a factor as we got closer to actual framing, it wasn't the primary factor. I mainly just wanted a stronger wall. This is an industrial building, even though I am gonna sheetrock the ends I wasn't quite sure 100% if I was going to, so if I was going to have exposed studs, I wanted them to be metal. So after having gone through it and seeing how magnificently that top track was able to bend and customize to the shape of the arch, I highly recommend this method. I don't have any experience. This is my first Quonset hut, so I don't have any experience really with how wood studs work in an arch but i would imagine you're custom cutting a lot of pieces i mean it's going to be a lot of custom cutting either way so we'll get a closer look at all of the different components but there are basically three components to my metal stud framing with one of those components being custom fabricated to create a fourth component the first one is the lower u-track and that supports the studs themselves it's just a basic u that's the shape of it and it it is what those metal studs sit on top of the second component is the studs themselves these are two by six heavy gauge c studs pretty straightforward and the c is for the shape of the studs and then the third component that i was really not as familiar with prior to this let me just get a zoom i apologize again for the lighting it's it's a dark overcast time right now and we don't have any lighting in here yet. So that third component is gonna be the top track. I'm pretty sure those are slotted deflection tracks which are used for superior head of wall vertical deflection and they also provide the added benefit of horizontal drift movement. And so 
when you have a building like this where it's going to be clear span with no added supports in the middle, you really want the maximum amount of support and drift resistance for this wall. And when we put this wall in, after it was framed, before we even put any of the OSB or the fiber cement siding, it, you could just feel how strong it was. It was solid. I almost felt like a tank could come through here and nudge it and it would be, <laughs> it would be pretty strong. So I'm really, really happy with how solid and strong that wall is. Now I mentioned a fourth component when I was just popping my head in here now, checking this out. I actually thought this was a separate piece, but then what I see is these, this piece here is actually a two by six stud. Let me bring the flashlight over. It's just a regular two by six stud that cross braces. And what they did, see if I can hold the flashlight and the camera. So what they did is they custom cut into the side channel of the stud perfectly to follow the shape of my Steelmaster arch. And then what they did is they kept this bottom plate. So they cut this channel and then cut that off. And what they did is the same on the bottom and you can kind of see the saw mark there. And then what they did is they found the exact placement of the existing bolt holes in the steel masterpiece and they custom drilled the bottom of that C channel. So what you have cross bracing these studs are that same C channel stud that have been custom fabricated to make these plates that cross brace and then they bolt on to the actual building. And where they put those, where with Steel Master, you have these double rows of bolts. You've got one there, one there, one at the top, one there, one there, one there. So every single spot where you have a row of double bolts is where they custom fabricated one of these cross brace pieces and then perfectly drilled aligned holes into that component so that they could tie that in to the actual building. Now, one important thing that we wanted to make sure we did when we framed in these gable end walls is we did not want to compromise the integrity of any of the arches. So there are no extra holes that we drilled in. Nothing was penetrated. We left all of those arches perfectly pristine as is, and then they used these custom plates that they fabricated to tie into them. I just wanted to make sure we didn't compromise any type of structural integrity when it comes to these arches. Um, this is my first Quonset and I know that they're engineered, you know, with the base plates and all of that rebar reinforcement under the slab. I mean, it's so much steel in a slab. So that does account for that structure and weight, but I just wanted to make sure we had some really, really strong gable end walls. For this top track, how they got the arch in it is they figured out exactly what increments they needed to cut these relief slots to then go through and bend as needed at the perfect angle to follow that arch. So if you follow this track, you'll see there's a relief cut there. There's another one right there. There's another one right there. There's another one right there and so on. And as it goes, you'll see more of this piece curved and overlapping to get that perfect arch to accept the top of those studs. This, while it looks like it may be easily bendable, this is solid heavy gauge track. So I'm not sure what tool or equipment they used to bend that, but however they did it, it's marvelous and it's working perfectly to accept those steel studs at the top. Now this gable end wall obviously is much easier. It's just a flat straight wall all the way across with a standard man door. So you have, you know, extra supports and a header there, but it's pretty straightforward. The bottom track, I didn't realize this until I got that question on my YouTube channel, but it is actually anchored into the concrete slab. They've got these two screws here. I'm not exactly sure how those were affixed. And it looks like there may be every, I don't know, off the top of my head, I would say 12 to 14 inches. So you do have those in, and then you have the studs 
joined in the U track at the bottom and then also at the top. So that is really how that component works. It's a lot of cutting into metal, which obviously is much more labor intensive than wood, but I feel like for being able to customize that top deflection track and curve to mat perfectly match the arch, I feel like that's worth the, worth the effort. Now, because this is me, and I'm complicated, and I'm fancy, and I'm crazy. I didn't do the same straight wall across the front. And so with anything in construction, every time you add a corner or an angle, that is more labor, more labor, more labor, more labor. So this wall was much more of a pain to frame, obviously, and to sheet and to side, but I'm very happy with it. I'm glad I just went for it because this is my, kind of my show building of everything that I'm doing on our property. This is the thing you see when you drive by and it gives you a big wow. So I'm really happy with how I ended up designing this front end wall. It just gives it a little bit, a touch of grace, <laughs> a little bit of flair because I wanted some, some of me in it. It's a little more complex, gives it more depth. Obviously, this is gonna look a lot cooler once I have it painted. So, breaking down this front gable end wall, just like the back wall, it starts right at the edge, tucked right into that last lip, and it does that on both sides. And then on this side, we're gonna have my electrical panel. So this is just a little nook that goes in. I'm going to have my electrical panel. I have my rebar grounding rod coming out from under the slab there. And then we go in. I wanted a few feet. I want to say they I want to say this is about six feet and this is three feet. So I wanted a tiny little lip to cover the overhead door that's going to be installed soon. And then because you really need to be able to um, strengthen and solidify, we have just this little bit that we can tie that door to. So then we follow that across and I wanted to have just this cozy, wonderful little alcove in here for customers coming in or myself or packages. I wanted to have a nice deep lip for this entry door. And so if it's raining or whatever, you just have this nice little cozy alcove to set into. And so yes, while I did give up square footage on that I think it's worth it and it just gives it this really nice added depth and element to the building that I just love I'm super happy with that how I'm going to break up the warehouse so I have from my last warehouse that I was renting I have these u-line uh, 10 foot high warehouse shelves. So I'm actually gonna split up the warehouse by putting all of those across and then keeping like an open path so I can get through there. And so that's gonna go across there and it's really gonna split my warehouse up in half. So this is gonna be the big receiving delivery area. I get huge pallet deliveries for clients and they come on full size tractor trailers and just those trucks at, at my last warehouse, which was an industrial warehouse still had trouble a lot in receiving deliveries. So when I mapped out how exactly how we were going to carve out this driveway and have this receiving pad, a lot of thought went into it after three years of leasing a warehouse where I had trouble with tractor trailers coming for deliveries. So this side is going to be kind of my receiving area. I might put some short shelving here all the way across just because I have so much crap and I need a place to get it all organized. And then I was really hoping that this back corner could kind of be my woodworking corner and have all of my tools. Um, I'm sure you've heard me speak about my addiction to Ryobi tools. So I have a huge collection of Ryobi tools. It's a sea of that beautiful lime green and even some of their old blue tools because I've been a Ryobi fan forever. And so I would really like to have kind of on top of that shelving some standing racks to have all of my tools organized and hanging readily accessible. So this is gonna be kind of my tool woodworking workshop side. We're gonna have receiving area, client inventory that's 
coming and going on these first few shelves. And then it's gonna, going to kind of look like a wall because of all that shelving. And then we'll maybe pop through here. And then this half is going to be a little retail pot. shop where I sell all sorts of stuff. And it's, don't get me started. I just have a lot of junk that I sell. And then if I do have a little warehouse office, it'll be somewhere on this side as well. So it's really not that much floor space. Again, I wish my building were three or 400 square feet larger, but I'm happy with it. And this is just the first one. There will be more. It's me we're talking after all. So this will be great to get me started. I think that's all I could really discern from the metal framing. But if you have any more specific questions, just pop them in the comments and I will try to get with my framing subcontractor and get those answers for you.